They weren't joking when they said that we would own nothing and be happy. First, they pulled the strings to make their member states take farmlands away from farmers with the Netherlands being the first to strike the blow. And they all claimed that it was for the purpose of climate change. When the curious question of why farmers were being targeted while captains of industries and companies that were largely responsible for these emissions were allowed to go scot-free, the governments of these countries gave weak reasons as that fertilizers were the culprits behind the greenhouse emissions experienced by them and in the world. They said this forgetting that the Industrial Revolution which spanned from 1760 to 1840 was the genesis of these emissions, not farming because it was during that period that industries sprang up for production and manufacturing purposes. In the course of manufacturing, these early industries made use of chemicals which they later disposed of into water bodies and lands. Through the concept of the carbon cycle and nitrogen cycle, the gases from these chemicals were taken into the atmosphere and thus affected the ozone layer hence causing climate change. And despite the hazards which these early industries presented with their operations, none of the modern-day industries have really done much to prevent chemical dumping and emissions. Yet, it is farmers that are being targeted by these governments in their radical battle against climate change. This begs the question of whether these governments and their puppet master, the World Economic Forum, really have as their true intentions the aim to prevent climate change and restore normalcy to the climate, or if they have an ace up their sleeves. Well, the WEF hasn't given us much time to think about this as they have come up with yet another proposition in their radical fight against climate change. To be honest, when I first saw the news while I was hunting on the internet, I was taken aback and my mind was like, what the F word? The international lobbying organization led by Klaus Schwab has asked that the ownership of private vehicles by human beings be reduced. And you can bet that the member countries will bring in drastic measures to carry that out. The WEF claims that since the world is transitioning to renewable energy sources, it would be important to channel what they called critical metals to the sustenance of such energy sources. In the mildest terms, this is crazy because private vehicles have been synonymous with living for so long that it is impossible to imagine a life where you can't get to buy and own your own car. Let's take a quick example. John is a working class fellow with a family. Because he has a private car, he can wake up at 7 a.m., fully rested to begin a new day at work knowing that he doesn't have to struggle for a seat on the bus at the park which would have stopped at his workplace. Then his government bans the use of private cars, and he has to catch the bus every day. So if he wakes up an hour or two earlier than before, not fully rested because he didn't sleep enough after a long previous day at work. Luckily, he catches the bus and gets to work, but because he isn't fully rested, his work performance suffers. There are a lot more examples of how important private cars are to our lives and how bad things can get if we do not have access to them anymore. Yet the WEF is calling for a reduction in its use. They said that the shortage of these critical metals would raise the cost of clean energy technologies. So they encouraged citizens the world over to ditch their private cars for carpools. Unbelievable. The organization said that more vehicle sharing can reduce ownership of idle equipment and thus material usage. In the WEF report, they point to how the average vehicle in England is driven just 4% of the time. By this, it means that using these critical minerals for the production of private vehicles is a waste of resources because most of the owners who use these vehicles don't utilize them most of the time, and such vehicles come out as underused. The organization said that these vital metals could instead be used in the production of electric cars, wind turbines, and other technologies that promote the advancement of clean energy and climate change. Why the WEF hasn't clamped down on industries and is instead chasing after farmers and now everyone else still remains a mystery of great concern. Meanwhile, this isn't the first time that the WEF has proposed a radical solution to climate change. In the earlier part of this year, the organization proposed a reduction in the carbon footprint of everyone across the globe. In its annual meeting, this was made known to the stakeholders of the WEF, and funny enough, these stakeholders attended this meeting in their private jets and limousines. This brings me to the question, what about the politicians and governments of the WEF member states? Well, Trudeau, for example, he banned from using private jets and limousines and would rather be asked to join the queue at bus stations or train stations. Of course, we know how our Canadian Prime Minister loves to travel in his private jets where he gets to consume whatever amount of alcohol he wants without the public getting wind of it. If politicians like Trudeau can be allowed to keep private jets that burn a lot of diesel, why can't the working class people keep their cars that run on petrol? Injustice is something that should not be tolerated and if that as much as plays out with this new WBF proposition, it should be heavily fought against because we cannot allow our lives to be controlled by a bunch of power-hungry capitalists who meet in Davos. Meanwhile, at that WEF conference, the president of Alibaba Group, J. Michael Evans, boasted about the development of an individual carbon footprint tracker, which would monitor what you buy, what you eat, and where or how you travel. What pains me is the fact that these stakeholders believe that they are immune to the laws they make for us.
the big questions, and this was one that people were asking me before I even got here to Davos, is how do all of these wealthy elites justify flying here on their private jets, getting into their limos, and then lecturing us all about climate change? You may have seen a, a video clip I took just on a whim a couple of days ago of all the limos backed up for hundreds and hundreds of meters as all the VIPs in their private cars tried to get into Davos. Well, the private jets are, again, no exception to the rule here in what's happening. And then we continue on and have have the fundamental question of what is it they actually want. Well, this morning, the president of Alibaba Group, J. Michael Evans, pitched one idea that he's really excited about debuting in the coming years. We're developing through technology an ability for consumers to measure their own carbon footprint. What does that mean? That's where are they traveling? How are they traveling? What are they eating? What are they consuming on the platform? So individual carbon footprint tracker. Mm. Stay tuned, we don't have it operational yet, but this is something that we're working on. Ah, so right there we have it, an app that you can use that will track your carbon footprint, where you travel, how you travel, what you eat, what you buy. But again, this is just for eco-conscious consumers, he's saying. This is for people that want to do it. Well, sure, maybe there are a few people that want to do that, but we're talking about Alibaba, a company with very deep ties to the Chinese regime, a social credit state. Social credit, not just being a government program, but something that also influences what is the so-called private sector there. So do we really trust that data in the hands of a company like Alibaba or anyone? But that's the whole thing. These people are talking about it as though you and I are the problem. I've never been on a private jet in my life, so my carbon footprint isn't near what it is for the Davos elites. I ran into earlier the World Economic Forum's head of climate, a fellow Canadian, and I wanted to ask her about this. I'm just wondering what the, the climate, what the global emissions are for this conference. Like, does the WEF tell people to not take private jets here? I'm sorry, guys. I'm not sorry. Well, it was a very short clip. As you can see there, she didn't really want to answer the questions. She said she didn't have time, but it was yes or no. Does the WEF tell its attendees not to travel here by private jet? That seems like at the very minimum, at the very minimum, if nothing else, something Davos attendees could agree to do without. On the part of Trudeau's corrupt and lying liberal government, there is a push to put more electric cars on the roads in Canada. In December last year, the Environment Minister Stephen Gilbolt talked about introducing a national mandate which would give automobile dealers in Canada the timeline of when to sell a designated number of electric cars to Canadian citizens. It is said that road transportation accounts for one-fifth of the greenhouse gas emissions in the country and the Liberal government wants half of all new passenger vehicles to be zero-emission cars by 2030 and 100% of all new cars to be zero-emission by 2035. But it seems that the rule to lead by example is lost on the environment minister as it was found that he put over 21,000 kilometers on his cars between the months of January to August of the year 2020, based on a month-to-month -month analysis that would be about 3,000 kilometers per month. Now, it is said that Canadians put about 15,000 kilometers on their cars, therefore making Gilbold a heavy commuter. But this isn't what he preached ahead of the 2019 elections. Then he told a Quebec radio station that he would try to avoid using a car for work. He said that he has never needed to have a car. He said that he understood that there are requirements when one is in a practice. It remains to be seen whether or not this proposition of the WBF will come to fruition. I hope it doesn't, but if in the unfortunate case that it does, it should affect everyone. And I mean everyone regardless of one's social status or whatever. What do you think of the WBF proposition? Do you think it would be implemented in its member countries? Please leave your comments on the questions and the video in general in the comments section down below. Also, do leave us a like on this video, subscribe if you are new or you haven't, and turn on post notifications so you don't miss out on any of our videos. All these help the channel grow and we appreciate all of you who help our cause. Thanks for staying with us.